It's vlog time, baby. Uh, take two, because I updated my OBS software, and it didn't, I don't know if it chose a different mic, but there was no audio, and I did not make sure. Anyway, I'm going to try to redo it. These aren't written down. These aren't thought out very well. I have a couple things prepped, and that's it. But, yeah, if I have to restart this, because sound did record. Oh. Uh, I just... Uh. Anyway, uh, I believe I mentioned I was re-watching Exandria Unlimited Calamity by Critical Role, featuring the DM... Uh, GM Brennan Lee Mulligan, Xandria Unlimited Calamity. Uh, a little bit into the second episode, but the first episode had a really awesome line that they had. I, I, uh, I hate it. I just talked about it and I don't want to talk about it again. I hate, I utterly hate rep having to repeat myself. Having to repeat myself. Anyway, uh, the line comes after the heroes talk to uh, the champion Provencal, uh, who is a champion for the Matron of Ravens, the Raven Queen, the Goddess of Death, um, who performed a ritual as a mortal and became and uh, removed. The god of death, prior to her, sundered his name into non-existence and took his throne. Doing so, removing her name from everyone's memory so no one could do it to her. Um, part of the plot line is that, for this miniseries, is that uh, an archmage, very powerful wizard, attempted some kind of ritual... But it was not to ascend to a prime deity, to one that, you know, they don't say good and evil, but one that resides on an evil plane of existence, uh, because the evil ones have had been sealed away and weren't allowed to do anything, weren't allowed to give mortals magical gifts or anything. Um, so it's believed that this mage, Vespin Chloris, attempted to replace one of the betrayer gods. And the champion, Provencal, um, when confronted with what he thought happened, if he believed that this mage did not recreate his goddess's ritual he could not utter the words betrayer gods he could not say that he felt Vespin Chloris tried to replace one of the evil gods and some little background talk occurred um, you know with Brennan asking the first night, you know, why, why do you think he hasn't, wasn't able to say that? And, you know, it, the, what, what Brennan's response to wrapping it together, it hold, I feel it holds true for a lot of people. Um, and what he said was, um, he felt that Provencal and the Wizards of Avalir had a lot in, had not necessarily a lot in common, but perhaps it's one thing. Uh, and it's with 
verbal denial. Uh, denying the ability to speak a thing. And the line he says is that you know, the Wizards of Avalir, Provencal, they believe in some ability that the mind, the heart, the soul are in control of what is real. And that if you do not speak it, it will not be. But some things are regardless if you are afraid to name them. You know, a lot of people don't want to talk about things that make them uncomfortable, things that are negative. But a lot of that affects a lot of people's lives, and without naming it, it still is there. And you're just not going to see it coming. Or you will, and you'll still just not name it. And you lose power in doing that. I mean, the amount of times I'm, I've been told, you know, you know, you just have to deal with that. You just have to deal with these people. You just have to deal with bullies, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, we need to name every single one of them. We need to shine the light because they exist they are regardless if we are afraid to name them or not and a lot of people that are toxic people I mean they've got some real big issues that definitely ignoring them and letting them be and continue to be they will always find a new victim Until they're not allowed to. That's just the way they are. They're narcissistic. They have no real friends. They can't develop uh, connections with people. Um, you know, even people they think are their friends, they, they'll bully and do dumb, terrible shit to. Um, so I don't see a sense in just letting things completely go until the light is shined, until they are named. Because they, they exist regardless. They might as well be named. They might as well get the credit for being toxic and terrible and evil. They might as well get it. They want it. They just don't want it to be negative against them, which, well, <laughs> you're a terrible person, so... Don't feel bad. Um, you know, there's... You know, it's... It's a thin line, brutal honesty. A lot of... A lot of people misuse it, but... We do not use it against toxic people enough. We don't name them enough. And then every once in a while they pop up in news and whatnot. But it, there's so many of them. And I kind of feel like not naming, skirting around. I mean, that's protecting yourself. And that's, you know. That's fine and dandy, but... If you're able to, to name, if you're able to speak the name, you should. Because then other people will be able to. And I've gotten a lot of encouragement for this because I've had a couple of people say, oh, we saw you say no to someone and didn't realize we could, that we did. <laughs> and now, uh, you know, we've got some freedom. And less toxicity in their lives. So, it works. Shining the light. Saying no to toxic people. It works. And we all have to do it. 
And honestly, you should not care about what happens to that toxic person. You can't fix them. You can't control them. They're going to self-destruct. They're going to ruin their lives. They may die, but if you could shine a light, get everyone to tell them no, get everyone away, they're just a ticking time bomb by themselves. They can't take anyone else down with them. That's a win-win. Because chances are, they are never, ever going to change. Never, ever. It's not happening. There's studies about it. You know, there's there's a study like, eh, you should only worry about convincing children to be better people. Because adults are so locked into it. it you know, their brains are solidified, you know, once they're out of their mid-20s. Mo- the majority of adults don't have the ability to change their their ideals. They just don't. And that's fine. Uh, another really awesome monologue that Brendan Lee Mulgan has that, you know, I cut it apart, you know, I remixed the words a little bit, um, or at least <coughs> some structure, pulled some stuff out. Uh, and it's on my Patreon as one of the poetry tags. Um, and it's called The Vision of Asmodeus. Asmodeus is the god of the hells, um, and he plays a pinnacle role in this miniseries. Um, and I just really love the way that Brennan was describing uh, what the Lord of Hells, the Father of Lies, gave to the world. But he and he and he he spoke a lot as Asmodeus, but this part he didn't, and I wanted to kind of make it more of Asmodeus's monologue and not as much Brennan's. Um, <clears throat> so it'll sound a little different than. What he says, um, but very similar. I mean, it's almost all his words. Just a little rework and tweak for, I don't know what they would call it, screenplay. Almost almost like a little screenplay rework. So, The Vision of Asmodeus. Remix from a monologue of Asmodeus by Brennan Lee Mulligan. Through my eyes, witness infinite hatred. You know it well. It is the gift I gave you. And I gave it in hate. But I don't hate you. I hate everyone. The purity of my hate. Endless torment without death. You deserve it. I always liked the Shakespearean tragedies. Grim stuff. You know, I you can get sunshine and rainbows shoved up your ass all over the place. But to have very good dark material I feel a lot more free experiencing that. It's 
harder to do. It's harder for people to enjoy and like. But I usually don't like things other people like. Not in general. You know, or sometimes I find that I've liked it far earlier than other people and then I push it out of my vogue. Um So yeah. Uh I ended up getting re- up really early this morning. Uh still tired. But uh, somewhat less stressed with the house offer and that I accepted. Um, you know, got to get the rest cleaned up. I have until February 16th, but I'm going to try and not try and get out earlier, um, and out of the house earlier. Um, nothing I can really do about that closing date now. So we wait for that, and hopefully all goes well. Um, I will be doing a Patreon exclusive, uh, some raw video of the trailer, which I've named the Bardo Serenity. Um, I'll eventually work that into a video for YouTube, but Patreon subscribers will get early access to all the Vardo footage from here until whenever, um, as well as a exclusive sneak peek of the finished video. Uh, yeah. So... If you want to see that, you got to subscribe to the Patreon. Yeah, that, that's what happens. And also tomorrow, I'm going to be, uh, well, I, I hope to do that shooting with uh, my friend Ethan. We're also going on a donut run to one of the best donut shops that I've ever been to. Uh, the Burnhamwood, whatever it's called. It's it's. I mean, it's changed hands a few times, but the donuts are still... Uh, like, I'm looking for something to compare them against. Uh, and I'm hoping to do that on the road. Try to find small mom and pop uh, bakeries and see what they got. Um, yeah, I'm going to cut this vlog short. Because... I feel like I need a nap someday, sometime. Ooh, holy wow. Yeah, I've been up since like three for some reason. I don't know. Um, need a little bit of a nap. I need to do some organization in the trailer, clean my truck out, and be as ready because we're going to head up early for donuts. We got to get there early for the good ones. Well, so they don't run out. <laughs> They're all great. It's just you might only get a select few if you don't show up early. Um, but yeah. Uh, so I don't know when the whole Vardo channel is going to launch, but hopefully soon-ish. Um, but... Definitely Patreon users are going to get, uh, or members, subscribers, uh, they're going to get a sneak peek. So if you want a sneak peek, and it could be a month, and I'm probably going to make it about a month. They're going to get to see st- things a month ahead of time before I edit any of the video together. Uh, so if you want to see what's happening in you know, a slight delay, not quite live, you're going to have to pay for it. Uh, and on that note, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, check out the link. It's got all my social. Someday it'll have more. It'll be an actually f- actual full-bold website. Um, 
try to put some st stuff on TikTok and Instagram, it mm, it could be going better. It could be going a lot better. Um, but we'll get there. And yeah, let's close out. Feywild is open to all whom are worthy. Always choose to be worthy. Skip try to take place of the betrayer god. It's not going to go well. And make sure you name things that you're afraid of. Especially if they're shitty, toxic people. You got to do it. We don't have a choice anymore. So, have a wonderful day.